Hi, Stan Moulton here with The Hunting Company. Today we're building the bee box. I'm going to show you how it's done. There's lots of different ways to do it, but we'll show you how we do it here in The Hunting Company Workshop. So this is a standard length drop box. The dimensions on this box are 9 and 5 eighths. The sides are 20 inches. The ends to the box are 16 and a quarter inches. Typically it's pine or spruce that's used. We're using spruce, right? We're using, uh, to assemble it, a, uh, a, a joint on the corners. It's a box joint or finger joint. We're going to cut out the pieces to this first, then we're going to assemble it, and then after we've assembled it, we'll put in the hand holds, and we'll put in the frame rests. So we're going to use a 1 by 12, and then we'll cut it down to the size we want. The size we want is 9 and 5 eighths. We don't want to start with a 1 by 10 inch because 1 by 10s purchased at your local hardware store are going to be 9 and a half inches. That's going to shrink. So anything less than 9 and a half is going to be too small for the B space around the frames. Before I cut the plank up, I like to look down there and see which side of the board has a crown in it. And so I'll usually put the crown towards the fence. I've got my frequently used measurements marked on my fence here, and this is nine and five eighths. snipe and some cracks and checks in the wood here so and um, uh, the uh, sawmill may not have cut this exactly square so I'm going to cut this off and square it up and I have the jigs that uh, are fastened to the fence on my cutoff saw and so I don't have to adjust these every time I set the dimension so the box side I know will be cut exactly the same length every time. I need two sides and two ends and I'm going to make sure that I don't have a knot or some imperfection in the wood right where I'm going to cut the finger joints okay so this this one will work fine for a side Now I'll cut the ends. I'm going to change jigs. I'm going to have a little waste anyway, so I think I'll cut that out so it's not in the way of one of the joints. Two ends. Okay, now we're ready to cut the finger joints or box joints. There's many different jigs you can use to cut box joints or finger joints. So the jig I'm using is a flipper jig. Now this jig is designed by Carl Korsken in Missouri and uh, it's a great jig for the purpose of building bee boxes. Let me show you how it works. We don't sell them. But he builds them and he builds them for beekeepers, specifically for use with bee boxes. So, um, here we go. 
I'll show you how we cut out the uh, sides first. I'll put the uh, rough side of the lumber in. Okay, we cut the uh, pieces out, now we're going to assemble them. Here's how it goes. I'll take, uh, start with side down, we'll put the ends in. It would make a stronger joint here if that knot wasn't right there. I should have cut that out. Now I'll put the clamps on. drill the nail hole so it's less likely to crack if it doesn't crack there then the water and the weather won't shorten the life of your box You can use a stapler, a crown staple to assemble these. You can use nails or you can use screws. I'm using a hand drive, ring shank, roofing type nail. It's galvanized.
If I pre-drill it, it helps the nails go in nice and straight so the wood grain doesn't take it out the edge like this one did right here. When you're planning out your material, if you can, it's also nice to plan so there's not a knot hole right here for your nail to nail into. Sometimes a beekeeper will leave one of the finger joints without a nail in it. So after a few years of use and the joints relax and loosen up a little bit, you can come back and put a nail into fresh wood and secure it up. This nail didn't go into the wood straight, so I'm going to take it back out and redo it. I could just leave that. The bees wouldn't care. It wouldn't interfere with anything, but it'll be a nicer box and a more professional looking assembly job if I do it right. Rather than go back in the same hole, I'll just put this at an angle. Okay, so the I've arranged the finger joints so that there's one, two, three, four fingers in the ends and one, two, three fingers in the sides. So I have more material at the top corner. This makes for a sturdier box when I have a nail that's driven from the end into the side. Now when I put in my frame rest, then I've got more material here. This top corner on the ends uh, on the top of the box is the weak, weak spot. I made a jig to hold the box in tight. It fits on my table saw and then I can move the fence over and clamp it down so this won't wiggle. And now I set my box in, inside the box. And now I can cut in the the uh, rabbit using my router. So the router bit will cut into the bearings. The bearing size I have on here will be three eighths of an inch out to the edge of the blade and then the depth is five eighths. So I'll set the router depth for five eighths. in the box and now we've got a frame and as we set the frame in the ears on the frame rest in the frame rests and there's enough space for the bees to crawl around the top bars and uh, around the frames on top and there's also a little bit of space on the bottom for the bees to crawl around. The okay, next thing to do is put the hand holds in the sides and the end of the box and I've got another saw set up to do that. Come on this way. So I've got this saw set up for uh, the handholds, and I've made a jig that uh, fits on here and it slides. It's got a ramp so it gets the angle. I'm going to be cutting the wood across the saw blade instead of into the saw blade. So I've got a stop here. The saw blade spin in this direction clockwise and this will prevent my piece from getting loose on me and causing a hazard. All right, I'll show you how this works. We'll do the sides of the boxes first.
I've got a nail here, a pin that I use to set the exact length so all my uh, handholds come out consistent every time. Now I'll adjust the jig for the ends of the box. See. Now I'm going to check the box. If it's not exactly square, now's the time to fix it. It's got a little bit of rubber. I'll show you how I fix that over here on the sander. Nice and square. Do the other side. Okay, from start to finish, that's how we build a box here at the Honey Company. There's other ways to build bee boxes. There's, you don't have to have three different table saws. I do that because it's quicker. You could uh, use one table saw and you could change the blades to a stacked dado cutter and use that for your flipper jig or, or your box joint jig also. And then you could change it over and put your jig for hand holes in it also. Um, you don't have to use the fancy uh, box joint. That's just uh, the standard for the industry. It makes a really strong joint. You can do a, a standard uh, dado uh, on the corners. Um, there's lots of different ways to do the hand holds. There's uh, different tools. There's uh, uh, a cutter you can put in the table saw that will do this also instead of just a blade. Um, so. Uh, Anyway, that's the way we do it. From start to finish, that takes about 10 minutes, and, and not including paint. Be sure to put two coats on.